But as I see the crisis gripping the nation, exacerbated by a president unwilling or unable to provide any kind of credible leadership and the work that needs to be done to protect people in this most desperate hour, I cannot in good conscience continue to mount a campaign that cannot win and which would interfere with the important work required of all of us in this difficult hour. Welcome to The Real News, I'm Jessel Noor. In breaking news, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders announced he's dropping out of the presidential race. This news comes just one day after, despite a last minute court battle and a stay at home order, thousands of Wisconsin voters braved the coronavirus outbreak to wait six feet apart in lines for hours and cast ballots in the state's presidential primary and local elections. The election should have been postponed, no doubt. Some Wisconsinites who had requested absentee ballots said they'd never received them, forcing them to choose between risking to cast a ballot in person or foregoing their right to vote. Well, our next guest called the Wisconsin election a shit show and said, in good faith, I cannot tell people to go out there and vote. And he's the state's lieutenant governor. We're joined again by Mandela Barnes. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, yeah, thanks a lot for having me. And it's uh, really good to see you again. So talk about what happened yesterday. Um, you know, all the public health officials, um, you know, national experts, international experts have been saying that these types of gatherings are extremely dangerous, especially to vulnerable populations. Yet um, the vote went on. Yeah, it was especially dangerous and irresponsible for uh, Republican leaders in the legislature to pursue uh, action, uh, legal action to uh, keep this election date in place, yesterday's election date. Uh, it's unfortunate that we got to that place. And when I woke up, the first thing I saw was so many people uh, waiting in line, uh, lines wrapped around the block. And, you know, I feel like uh, they had a frustration and I shared that frustration, uh, which is why, uh, you know, the, my first observation is what it was. Uh, you know, people were going to vote. You don't, you wait an hour, you wait hours in line at Six Flags, not at the polls. Um, that in itself is a form of voter uh, disenfranchisement because folks uh, have things to do. People have lives to live. Uh, and also there were some weather conditions too uh, that made it difficult for a lot of folks uh, to stand outside, literally people weathering a storm to cast a ballot, people putting their health and their safety uh, at risk. It was a very, uh, it, it was an awful situation. It didn't have to take place uh, at all, uh, given the fact that the governor tried to delay this election, which was the responsible thing to do, which was very necessary. And you had people who requested absentee ballots who didn't receive those ballots. A lot of those folks, uh, you know, I, I can think of examples from people that, I, that, you know, replied to me on Twitter that talked about, having a, a person at home, a spouse or a partner with a compromised immune system. And if they were to go out to vote, they would be putting their partner, their spouse, the person they live with at risk because they wanted to exercise uh, their constitutional right, because they want to exercise their civic duty. And what having the election uh, yesterday uh, did was create uh, chaos that I personally haven't seen before. Uh, but a level of chaos that no, uh, no person should be subject to. So Wisconsin's, uh, what you alluded to, Wisconsin's Democratic governor, Tony Evers, ordered the election postponed until June, but he waited till Monday to do that. And the, mm -hmm. the state Supreme Court reversed his order in a, in a ruling late on Monday um, after Republican leaders challenged Evers' decision. So talk about who makes up that court. And, you know, some have said, that um, Evers, you know, could have acted sooner, but he, he said he didn't have the authority to do so. He previously said that. What, what's, well, what's your response to that? Yeah, and uh, having previously said that, I mean, you see what happened uh, when he did issue the order. I mean, whether the or, or issue or excuse me, whether the order was issued uh, a week earlier or a month uh, earlier, uh, we would have seen a similar, if not the same outcome. And, you know, the governor tried to work with the legislature in good faith as working in shared government, that should be the case. Uh, prioritizing the health and safety of people. Uh, once there was no response uh, from the legislature, there's been no response from the legislature in terms of overall COVID-19 response, let alone uh, how to uh, shape democracy in this moment. And having uh, several failed attempts, the uh, governor decided in the 11th hour, yeah, that 
he would take executive action to delay the uh, to delay the election. And as we see, our courts are controlled by Republicans. Many would say uh, that it is conservative control, given the fact that it is technically nonpartisan, but that is only a technicality. Uh, these are very much Republicans that control our courts here in the state of Wisconsin. And we have Republicans who control our courts and at the highest court of the U.S. Supreme Court as well. And they acted right along uh, Republican state legislators, uh, they abetted um, their attempt to subvert democracy. And so, um, obviously, um, you know, Scott Walker's reign in Wisconsin had a transforming effect, effect for workers, you know, for just the functioning of government and the courts. And he was backed by, you know, Americans for, for Prosperity and other groups funded by the Koch brothers that you know, have proven time and time again to put profits over anything else. And, you know, anything, they're willing to spend unlimited money to demolish anything that sort of stands in their, in their pursuit of money. Um, what impact does that have specifically on, on um, Wisconsin today, specifically um, this court decision? I mean, it's had a tremendous impact. You know, when you have uh, these you know, Supreme Court justices in the state who are up for election, you have to bring it back to the money. You just mentioned uh, about the you just mentioned the influence uh, that big money has played in the state of Wisconsin. It's why uh, the rights of working people have been rolled back uh, when you know Wisconsin was once seen as a leader in offering protections to working people and uh, also offering a, a certain quality of life uh, for individuals in all corners of the state. And we see that that's not the case anymore. And, you know, with uh, the former governor, uh, you know, you look at even judicial appointments. And I, I mentioned this uh, last night on the news, uh, you know, as progressives, it's important for us to pay uh, more attention to the courts, uh, you know, and that doesn't mean stop paying attention to other things, but we need to pay as much attention to the courts uh, because we consistently see uh, rights being threatened or just outright being rolled back. Um, Donald Trump cares about the courts. Uh, the, the amount, the percentage of judicial uh, vacancies that Donald Trump has filled, uh, he's gotten the Supreme Court justices. And, you know, that is, uh, you know, largely in part because, you know, the judicial system has not been at the forefront uh, of our thinking. And, and I get it. It's different because they're not, you know, issuing the press releases. They're not giving press conferences. So you don't necessarily see them in the public. Uh, but if we continue to ignore the judiciary, uh, we're going to be in a world of hurt for, for generations to come. So Bernie Sanders, he's just dropped out of the presidential race today. He was down 300 delegates. Um, you know, he acknowledged that he had a really um, slim chance to victory. And, you know, and the clip that um, we played at the top of the segment, you hear him say, you know, he can in good conscience continue this um, this campaign. Um, and he actually did not do a get out the vote effort on election day. Um, he said, it's outrageous that Republican legislative leaders and the conservative majority on the su Supreme Court in Wisconsin are willing to risk the health and safety of many thousands of Wisconsin voters tomorrow for their political gain. Let's be clear, holding this election amid the coronavirus outbreak is dangerous, disregards the guidance of public health experts, and may, and may very well prove deadly. Um, which was a bold stance for a candidate to, to take, uh, you know, in this crucial election. Election, someone, some had, some had called um, Wisconsin "do or die" for Sanders. Um, as a progressive um, elected official, um, you know, what are your thoughts on Sanders dropping out now? You know, he won elect, he won Wisconsin handily in 2016, and it was a, sta a state that Trump ended up narrowly winning um, mm -hmm. as part of his um, electoral, you know, victory, um, um, you know, to get to the White House. Um, the importance of Wisconsin. Yeah, so I think that the debate was much better having Bernie Sanders uh, being a part of it in you know, 2016 and this year. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I was proud to have voted for, for Bernie in 16. I was very excited when he got into the race uh, this year. And I mean, after Super Tuesday, I guess the writing was kind of on the wall. However, the fact is, you look at the progressive issues that candidates all across the country are taking on, the things that people are talking about and things that people aren't afraid to talk about anymore. I think that uh, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to Bernie Sanders um, and, his, and his bold thinking, uh, laying out a vision uh, for the United States of America uh, that many people uh, weren't comfortable uh, embracing it at one point or weren't com comfortable talking about them. He opened the door to so many new conversations, uh, debates that have to be had. So, uh, you know, I'm forever uh, appreciative 
to uh, to Bernie Sanders for 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 running and for talking about this stuff, running for the highest office. It's not like he was running for you know a, a village trustee and bringing up these these ideas. He ran for president on uh, you know talking about big bold ideas. You know, uh, 2016 is a little bit closer. I mean, he, the fact that he won states in 2016, uh, you know, against uh, someone with much more name recognition, someone who's been in the public eye for far longer, uh, the fact that he won any state uh, shows that uh, people in this country are ready for change. And given the way that the uh, 2016 general election uh, played out, it shows that people wanted something different and people wanted something more uh, you know, uh, you know, I wish he could have gotten more traction this year, but you know that's not the case. However, uh, the ideas live on, and I, I think that uh, beyond the 2020 cycle, I think that in 24 and in 28 and beyond, uh, folks are going to say, uh, you know, uh, he told us so, or I'm sure glad we went ahead with that idea. And finally, um, what is it going to take for Democrats to win states like Wisconsin, which are going to be crucial if they're going to win an, uh, you know, an electoral victory? We know that you know, Hillary Clinton won three million more popular votes, mm -hmm. but unless you win that electoral college, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I tell people all the time it has to be a vision. Uh, we can't just, you know, running against Donald Trump is not going to get it done in November, saying that you're not him or, you're, or vaguely saying you're going to do things differently. Uh, that's not the answer. That's not the recipe. Uh, you know, that was the case in 2010, 2012 for the recall in 2014 with the former governor. A lot of those campaigns were explicitly anti Scott Walker and they got us nowhere. Uh, but you know, two years ago, uh, there was a vision uh, that we led with. We talked about uh, the need to address the concerns of, of, of working people in the state of Wisconsin, the need to uh, address education, the need to prioritize our environment. Uh, and now ultimately, that's what got us over the hump. And it's going to have to be the same way uh, in November. All right. Mandela Barnes, Lieutenant Governor of Wisconsin. Thank you so much for joining us again. Yeah, thank you for, uh, thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us at The Real News Network. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more solemn favor. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.